Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And as you can tell, I'm not in my office. I'm not at, uh, in the sanctuary of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Today, I am in the lobby of a hotel in Mobile, Alabama at the Men Perfecting Men's Conference. I'm, praise God, I'm honored to be here. I thank God for blessing me to be able to get to the conference um, I, the, listen, I have an assignment from the Lord to preach the word of the Lord tonight. And uh, I'm excited about that. But before I talk about that, I've got to say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your prayers, your, your cards, your texts, your warm response. You have been fantastic in standing by this preacher and encouraging me uh, uh, during the death of my wonderful mother. As you know, my mom went home to be with the Lord and I'm just so grateful to the God of the Bible for blessing my mother with 88 plus years. And uh, when she got ready to go home, the Lord took her and uh, and we're, we're getting through it. We're carrying on. Uh, I'm on what I call a roller coaster. Some days I'm as strong as I can be and uh, going forward and doing the work of the Lord and presenting myself as I'm presenting myself to you right now. And then there are other times when I'm crying like a baby, crying like a son who lost his mother. And, uh, and I, I say to those who may experience loss and grief and these things, uh, go with the emotional flow, but we don't go with the flow like the world does. We do not uh, mourn and weep as those who do not have the hope that we have. For we know when Jesus comes, that Jesus is going, going to bring our loved ones with him and we are going to be reunited in, in Christ going forward in the things of God and we're going to be together forever. And I am so thankful for the promises of God and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. He said, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter number four and verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Some translations translate this last clause as even as others who have not this hope. What hope? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so even them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring forth with him. Praise the Lord. So I put my faith in the doctrine. I know what the Bible says, and I'm excited uh, about what God's, God's word said. And the Lord is comforting me and seeing me, my wife, my brothers, the upper room church, all who knew my wonderful mother, the Lord is seeing us through. Now, listen, I want to change the subject a bit uh, because I want to read a passage of scripture to you. Uh, Galatians uh, chapter number five and verse nine says this. It says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And I want to read also uh, from uh, uh, Second Peter chapter number two, verse, uh, verse uh, one says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers also among you who shall privately bring in damnable heresies. Now, why did I read these two passages? We are seeing this play out in our society today. The Methodist church, I, I, have, I have a story right here in my hands that says the Methodist church, Methodist is gone, it says Methodist gone wild. Methodist gone wild. The United Methodists were willing to break their church for the cause of homosexuality. To clear the way, they got rid of their American conservatives 
and denied their African members the right to vote. Now, you always hear people talk about voter suppression. Well, the Methodist Church, according to this story, denied their African members the right to vote, thus liberated. They are going even further to the point of accepting all extramarital sex, according to this this article. I, I tell you, it's it's hard to believe that these things are going on in uh, the Methodist Church. Methodists have long been known been known for their strict personal morality, thanks to John Wesley's focus on the methods of Christian life and his strong emphasis on sanctification. So even after the United Methodist Church joined the other mainline Protestant denominations in embracing liberal theology, they continued to hold on to their traditional morality. But that day has passed. It's gone. Look at this. The article goes on to say, but today in progressive circles, the one moral imperative that overrules all other is embracing the LBGTQ agenda in its entirety. But the Methodist Book of Discipline teaches that sex is reserved for marriage and specifically rejects homosexual behavior. Furthermore, it forbids the ordaining or the ordination of ministers who are practicing homosexuals. And yet the Methodist church has thrown this away. They're not the only ones, my friends, who have gone crazy. Something has happened to the Boy Scouts of America. Boy Scouts of America changing name to more inclusive scouting America after years of woes. Listen to this. The Boy Scouts of America is changing its name for the first time in its 114 year history and will become Scouting America. The question is, what are they scouting for? Scouting America. It's a significant shift as the organization emerges from bankruptcy following a flood of sexual abuse claims to seek to focus on inclusion. Now you would think with sexual abu abuse claims that, that the Boy Scouts of America would go in a more Christian and a more conservative direction, but instead they're going even in a more liberal direction. The organization uh, uh, steeped in tradition has made seismic changes after decades of turmoil from finally allowing homosexual youth to welcoming girls throughout its ranks with an eye on increasing fledgling membership. The Irvin, Texas based organization announced the name changed Tuesday at its annual meeting in Florida. Look at this. In the next 100 years, we want any youth in America to feel uh, very, very welcome to come into our program. So now they have welcomed adult homosexuals to be scout leaders. They're welcoming adult homosexual children to be a part of the scouts. They're, they're welcoming girls to be a part of the boy scouts. And so now they've dropped the name from boy scouts to scouting America. What happened? The scriptures that I just read to you in Galatians and in uh, second Peter, that's what happens. Incrementalism incrementalism. The Bible says, know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And also uh, uh, syncretism, how they allowed these damnable doctrines and damnable heresies to be brought into the church almost without being noticed, little by little, one step at a time. I'm praying that this great church that I'm a member of, the Church of God in Christ, that we do not die the death of a thousand cuts, that we do not allow the enemy to, uh, through syncretism and through uh, one step at a time coming in, through leaven, slipping in and causing the whole lump 
to be leavened. So my friends, I want you to pray. Pray for me. Pray for the body of Christ. Let's pray for the church uh, of, of God in Christ and pray for the church at large that we do not give in uh, to uh, syncretism and incrementalism and we little by little stop noticing the wickedness of the enemy and uh, we die the death like the frog being boiled in water. You put it on the stove in a pot of cold water and turn the stove on and if you warm that water up slow enough the frog will literally boil to death, not even noticing that he's on fire, that he's boiling. The devil is a liar. Now, my friends, I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I have tonight a tremendous uh, gift for you. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, I will not be able to be there between the men's conference and uh, being with my family, uh, with the passing of my mother, I will not be at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ on this Thursday night. But I have a ram in the bush. I have another gift. Uh, Minister Vaughn Graves, one of our preachers, one of our elders, Vaughn Graves uh, is going to be preaching the word of the Lord tonight. And you're going to be blessed by this man of God, and I know what you're going to think. You're going to say to yourself, my, can, uh, is it that all of the preachers at the upper room can preach? Well, the answer to that may be yes. So I want you to join uh, us tonight right here at the upper room, Church of God in Christ for Bible study and good preaching. This man of God is going to preach. The word of God is going to go forth and you are going to be blessed. And listen to all the moms out there, to all of you, I want to say to you, uh, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. I want to say to everyone who is blessed to yet have your mother, make sure you make that Mother's Day special. And I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you something else. For me, Mother's Day will be special because God bless me to have my mother for 62 years and I have wonderful memories. Oh, I didn't say that it wouldn't be painful. I didn't say that I wouldn't miss her. But you know what? We're going to have a awesome Mother's Day. By the way of announcements, this coming Mother's Day, this Sunday, we are going to have the one service, the 11 a.m. service. And the reason we're doing that, I have the assignment. Well, one of the reasons is I have the assignment of preaching my mother's home going. She told me, son, I want you to do it. And then she looked at me and said, can't you handle it? And I guess I got to since she gave me that to those orders. And it's going to be this coming Saturday at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ at 12 noon. We're going to have the eulogy. Then we're going to come back the next day, Sunday, Mother's Day. And we're going to celebrate the mothers that we have who are yet in the land of the living with us. And we're going to celebrate those that have gone on to glory. I said to someone, this Mother's Day will be like uh, every other Mother's Day, like every Mother's Day. On every Mother's Day, there are people who are celebrating who have their mother. And then there are people who are celebrating who had a mother. And those are the two categories that we count. Please don't be one of those who have a mother at Mother's Day on Mother's Day and you not celebrate your mom. Thank God for your mother. And for those of you who are blessed to have a mother still with, yet in the land of the living, you do everything you can while you can. And you thank God every day for having a mother. I certainly thank God for mine. She was my first evangelist. She was the one who brought, took us to church. She told us about Jesus. She took us to the, to the temple church of God in Christ, where, where I heard the late, great James Henry Turner 
preach the gospel with power and authority and it changed my life. Did you hear me? It changed my life. And uh, all the memories that I have of Brother Gary, the memories that I have, Brother Devante, of my mother. And the wonderful times that we had together. And, uh, and she had been, she'd been telling me for a while, son, I'm, I'm, it's going to be all right. Uh, regardless of uh, however it comes out, it's going to be all right. Either way, that was, that was a thing. Either way. And I knew what she was telling me. She was telling me that she's getting ready to go. And I'll close out with her saying this. One day we were in the hospital and my mom had taken a turn for the worse and I went to see her. And she looked at me and she said, son, what's happening to me? Because her body was failing her. And uh, I said to her, I looked at her tears meeting under my chin. And, uh, and by the way, it's been a whole lot of that lately, but tears meeting under my chin. I said, mama, you're on your way home. And when I told my mother that she was on her way home, my mother lit up. She said, what? Is that what's happening to me? Well, praise the Lord. Then she said, but your brother, and she mentioned one of my brothers, my brother Gabriel. She said, Gabriel said that it was something else going on. Maybe it was the medicine. Maybe it was this. I said, yeah, but Gabriel's not your pastor. He's not your bishop. He's not your spiritual leader. Mom, you're getting ready to see Jesus. And I was able to take that and talk to her about that because looking back on it, Brother Devante, she was the one who conditioned me and got me to the point where I realized that she's about to go home to be with the Lord. She conditioned me to be in a place where when she got ready to go home, I could take it. And I said to someone, there are times when I am rejoicing through my tears and through my tears, I am rejoicing. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, I will rejoice and I will thank God. He, oh, Listen, I will thank him for what he has done and for how good he's been to my mother and how good he's been to me and mine. You are looking at a preacher. I'm not in denial. Yes, I know that she's my mother, but I'll tell you what, I'm not angry with God. I'm not angry with Jesus Christ. I do not think for one minute that Christ did us wrong. In fact, we have, to be, we have been the recipient of great grace, tremendous mercy, and tremendous kindness from the God of the Bible. And when I think about my mother being up there with Jesus and she looked at the Lord, you know, and uh, she's 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 talk, she's began to talk to uh, some of the saints of God. And I have friends of mine, uh, 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 Bishop Roderick Hennings, uh, uh, Pastor John Robinson. Roderick is out of Buffalo, New York. John Robinson is out of uh, uh, Pennsylvania, Clariton, Pennsylvania. And all of our moms died within days of each other. I wonder if they hadn't bumped it. And all of our moms are born again. I wonder if they hadn't bumped into each other by now and introduced themselves to each other. <laughs> well, there's so much to look forward to. So much to be glad about. And you know why? I got to go. I got to close this. Because we believe this book and this doctrine. It will never fail you. It will never let you down. Read your Bible. Pray to Jesus Christ. Trust the Lord. And he will see you through. Now I got to go. Sitting out here in the hotel lobby. People walking by. <laughs> I hear an echo. I, they got music playing on the, on the, uh, the system here. So I hope, we, I hope you can hear me. But I am fired up. And, and listen. I, I've got to preach. Now, by the time you see this, I will, ha I will have already preached. And so I guess you'll judge how I did. But I'm prophesying right now by the help of Jesus Christ and on the goodness of my Lord. I'm preaching tonight and I'm preaching the word of God with power and authority without apology. 
Now you go on and make it a great day. God bless you.